completely ignoring natural cycles within the body that echo the seasons and create physical pain, mental distress, depression, anger and exhaustion. So there is a solution here. <laughs> Hands up who likes summer? To wear lighter clothes, smell that intoxicating smell of the sun on your skin. All those things that you love to do at summer. Solstice, the longest day, the shortest night that you would never consider doing in the winter. But imagine if it was summer all year round. I live in a yurt. In the summer, the air is literally electric with the insects day and night. I barely sleep at all. It's exciting, it's bright, it's hot. And by the time autumn comes, it feels like a blessed relief. <laughs> Life starts to feel softer and more gentle. So as a woman, we are intimately connected to the cycles of the moon powerful enough to pull the tides over the entire globe towards it. It pulls the fluids that our brains rest in, causes the rhythms of the menstrual cycle, which reflect the seasons of the year. Problemo. <laughs> As we have become increasingly disconnected from nature, insulated by our thick walls, our strong clothing, removed from the cycles of day and night by electric lighting, driven on and on by the rhythms of society as if it is always summer. Even in the dark depths of winter, we're still getting up at the same time, driving our children to school in the dark and coming home in the dark. These demands on our bodies are relentless because of completely ignoring the natural cycles within the body that echo the seasons the cycle of the moon every month it can create physical pain mental distress depression anger and exhaustion when we don't listen your period becomes a pain and some even call it a curse which i feel wow what a sad sad energy to bring to ourselves and our daughters when in fact it can be the key to accessing your magical witchy self yeah! a way to tune in to the subtle rhythms and flows within your own being to remind you of your unbreakable connection to be nature, to be nature, nature. One of the clearest teachings that nature gives us is the cyclical nature of nature. The seasons, the rhythms, the changing desires and needs of all the plants, of the animals and of humans. Summer is this time of high energy, optimism, enthusiasm. Garden is full of fruit. You might feel more extrovert. Feel that sexy summer warmth in your body. It's a time to be bold, energetic, powerful. You, you desire salads and drink, cool drinks. It feels like a great time. And this is equivalent to ovulation in your menstrual cycle. Autumn is that blessed relief that letting go, when the fruits become seeds. A time of nostalgia, the desire to prepare for the winter, to get your firewood in. Get ready to settle in. This is the premenstrual part of your cycle. Your senses are greatly heightened, a time of great creativity. And then winter, time to rest, time to get cozy, to hibernate like a bear or a hedgehog. Gather your strength, slow right down, be lazy, eat warm, comfortable food. Hello, sir. Hello. You want to snuggy up by the fire in nature. Nothing appears to be happening, but you know that there are magical, unseen, transformative processes going on. Getting ready, gathering strength for the next part of the cycle. So in the menstrual cycle, this is the time 
when you are actually bleeding. Yeah, when you like videos and comment on them, it helps the YouTube algorithm. We all know about the algorithms, right? To spread it further. And so then we can gather more people to support living <laughs> from nature's wisdom. After that, we have spring. Who doesn't love spring? That rising energy, the sense of excitement of what is to come. It's like when you see the new moon and you just have that instinctual knowing that you have a new chance, a new opportunity, new possibilities, new hope, new ideas of innocence, of fresh, soft grass stems. When you want to plan ahead, and this in the menstrual cycle is when you set off again renewed if you have tuned in to the wisdom of moving with those seasonal cycles within you. When you tune into your cycle, you discover that rather than being a pain and a curse, this can actually be the key to a deep and powerful innate wisdom. Your doorway to access this wisdom, knowing that you belong, that you are intimately part of this endless cycle. that your rhythms are a reflection of the rhythms of nature, of the cycles of the moon, and that you are touched and moved by this. So when you start to recognize that you're not a robot <laughs> in a continual drive of endless summer, summer, summer action, but a vibrant, flowing, changing woman whose moods change like the sky and like the sea, with energy that changes with those seasons, with desires that change. And you respect those changes in yourself. Allow yourself the luxury of becoming a seasonal creature. And love yourself through all those seasons, the bright ones and the dark ones. You can use your knowledge of the cycles within yourself to plan your life. I'm 51 now and I've been recording my cycle since my 20s and far from finding it to be a curse I actually love 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 it. Yeah! Each part of the cycle has its own unique flavour. I've loved getting more familiar with these flavours, organising my life around them to flow with them. <laughs> Heading towards the menopause is called the perimenopause and it can begin in some women as early as the age of 30. Those cycles that happen in every cycle of your period become more and more pronounced during this time. The qualities of each one get deeper, more and more fun to ride those waves. Do you remember <laughs> when you were a teenager, just getting your first boobs, starting your period, and the whole world was changing within you as so you got used to coping with the new hormones and the new desires that arose within you? Moving towards the menopause is as significant, and it can take 10 years or more <laughs> not to be sniffed at or brushed aside or ignored, but one to be honoured, be embraced, enjoyed. You deserve deep love and great gentleness from yourself as you move through this transformation. And if you've got to the stage in your life where your periods have stopped, the moon has not. The changing faces of the moon still are affecting all the fluids in your brain and in your body, your moods, your energy. And you can still tune into those, move with the wisdom of those rhythms. Even if you've never kept track of your periods before, you can start now. Allow yourself to flow with those unstoppable, irrepressible changes of nature and allow it to guide you. So I've got book recommendations for you. Yeah! Each of these books is brilliant. Yeah! The first one is a book called Reaching for the Moon and it's by Lucy Pierce 
It's aimed for girls, nine and older, as they begin to anticipate and start to feel those first changes. It gives them a beautiful, soft introduction to the cycles, to understanding themselves, and to be gentle with themselves through it all. There are so many expectations in the world, real big hard pressures on our daughters. So much input that they have to deal with that we never had to deal with in the 80s and the 90s from social media and stuff like that. And this book really helps them to celebrate this transition into becoming a woman. So the next book is a real wow. <laughs> You'll probably think I'm <laughs> way too over enthusiastic about it. It's called Wild Power. It's by Alexander Pope and Sujani Wurlitzer. There are so many great things to say about this book. So I'd been tracking my cycles for years, but this book taught me about the crossover days, the days in between those four seasons of the cycles when you're changing gear. And they can be days of real wobble. Sometimes you might just feel wobbly and you've got no idea why. And this is the great thing about tracking your cycles. It starts to make sense. And once you understand and recognize again and again these patterns within you, it gives you um, a confidence and a strength to be able to ride them. Be gentle with yourself. Be gentle rather than being in that expectation of endless robotic summer to relax winter is essential for regenerating the strength for the next spring so is that time for resting for us in our own cycles and it happens a lot more often than once a year <laughs> it talks about how even if you are in one of those demanding jobs being expected to perform day after day after day how to gift yourself the one percent of what you would ideally like to be doing in terms of rest, self-care, or even that tiny, tiny one percent can nurture you immensely. This last one is called The New Menopausal Years. It's written by Susan S. Weed. She's a well-known herbalist. Wise woman way. And at the bottom it says, alternative approaches for women between 30 and 90. So that gives you an indication of how long that whole transformative process can go on for. I love this book. It's written as if you're being spoken to by a really loving, wise grandmother who's guiding you through those processes from being this fertile woman, childbearing years, to, um, to become a young crone, to move into the wisdom years. It starts off with, you know, is this the menopause? With herbal approaches, all of it is nourishing and tonifying for your whole system. You're not just coping with the symptoms, but you are actually building your body to be strong as you become older. Each one of these books really evokes the specialness of being woman, of having those changes flowing through us, from being a young girl to an old crone. So I encourage you to check out these books, maybe for yourself, your friends or your daughters. In the description box below you can see them. They're all from the book depository and if you were to purchase them through my links I would receive a small commission. It doesn't affect the price that you pay at all. Also, those of you who don't yet know that something else special happens with these videos. As you support these videos with your likes, your comments and your shares, we in turn support families in Malawi to have clean drinking water. How often do you ever think about, is my drinking water clean? I never think about that, I just assume it. But just imagine if every single day you had to walk carrying 
enormously heavy water through searing heat back to your families and then not even know if it might have germs in it that would end up killing them. We're so lucky here to be able to have clean water. This most fundamental of human needs just to stay alive. So I ask you please to share this video just with one person who you think would appreciate the information within it. And then I will link to this video here, an interview that explains all about how it works. It's too long for this video. Feel free to check it out. And I want to thank you immensely for your support, dear women. Yeah, when you like videos and comment on them, it helps the YouTube algorithm. We all know about the algorithm, right? <laughs> to spread it further. And so then we can gather more people to support our brothers and sisters in Malawi. So thank you again. This is Mary Jane from Know You Are Earth. See you soon.